This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. What's going on? Welcome to another live edition of Real Fans Real Talk. We got a special guest with us uh, today. This is a special episode. We're getting ready for the Super Bowl. Um, I, I had a little disappointment this, this weekend. Y'all know what's up. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Let me introduce first my co-host, Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend in Two Games. What's going on, man? What's really good, bro? You know, we got a lot to get into, and it's a great opportunity with the young man that we have featured today to talk some good football, man. Facts, facts, facts. Um, let me. Th th this young man is somebody who... I, I've been watching him play football since he was like eight years old. This is actually not his first appearance on Real Fans Real Talk because he was he was on the show maybe I think nine or ten years old. You you were on Real Fans Real Talk when we were in the studio along with the with the rest of the Glen Cove Cardinals after y'all had won the championship um, yeah. in Long Island. So this is actually your second time, but mm -hmm. uh, two time NYC. CHS uh football league champion. Did I say it right? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Two time back to back to back champ at the quarterback uh position and now uh the the newest uh quarterback addition to Rutgers University. I see you got the shirt, you got the shirt on today. <laughs> Rocco, what right. is going on, man? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Appreciate you coming on the program. Um, I had to because you know, I um I, since I, I I've been with you guys for so long. Like when, you, when first of all, when y'all won the championship, I automatically won the championship as well as part of the media for the team. I feel like you know how like the, the team doctors and everybody get a ring. Mm -hmm. I you know I feel like I get a championship too. Um, yeah. but to see the growth um with it with you guys from youth football to becoming a high school uh, champion and then now getting ready to go into the collegiate level playing for Rutgers University University just talk to me about the, the football journey uh it's been a long process um I knew I always wanted to play in college so it wasn't really like an option um I got lucky coming to Holy Trinity and um I came at the right time with the right coach and the right people and uh we won a lot of games and we got a lot of attention and it helped me get to where I'm at now Rocco, I wanted to ask you, because a lot of people who, who love sports and grow up uh, playing sports, as you mentioned, you know, your goal is to get to that next level. Yeah. What was the recruitment process like? Um, um, speaking with coaches, visiting schools, what was that whole process like? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the funnest thing in the world at times. It, it was pretty stressful for the most part. Um, a lot of no's before yeses. So it was cool. It was really cool to see colleges and uh, get around and having the opportunity to play at Rutgers was something I could have only dreamed of. It was the school I wanted to go to when I first saw it. Um, it's a long process and a lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it, but I'm happy where I am now and I couldn't be more grateful. Yeah. You, you're in the, the tri-state area right now um, at, at a school that is starting to regain some of that popularity that they once had, especially with the success of Isaiah Pacheco and what he's doing with the, with the Kansas City uh City Chiefs right now with them going to to the Super Bowl. Um yep. but before before we get to college, you guys um you guys had a little bit of adversity. You, you changed coaches your last year. Yep. Um did that did that affect um or did that have any type of effect on you with recruitment because going from winning back-to-back -back championships only losing one game in two seasons, did that have any type of effect on you? Uh, yeah, it definitely had an effect on me personally. I wouldn't say it had an effect on my recruiting considering that it was already done. Like I, I, I was already talking to coaches from previous years. Um, but during the season and on a team, it was definitely, it, it was hard for us to, uh, it was hard for us to regain from where we were at. Um, coach Roy was the best coach I've ever been uh, coached by. And it was definitely hard to have a change of coaching and everything was different. Um, the year didn't go as this year obviously didn't go as it did the last two years. We were in a higher division. We played harder team, but um, we tried our best with the new coach. Um, 
Coach Butler, who's a great guy, great coach. Um, he got thrown into the mix out of nowhere. He just wanted to be the quarterback coach, and he became head coach. So it, it was tough for all of us, but I wouldn't say it affected my recruiting that much. Uh, Roy helped me out a lot my junior year. So, yeah. How, how do you feel your time at Holy, at Holy Trinity has now prepared you for this next step? Like I said, with Coach Roy, he kind of prepared us for college before college. So um, I think I'm as used to it as anybody else could possibly be coming out of high school. Um, obviously, it's a huge step going into college, but uh, I think I'm as prepared as I could be at a football standpoint when it comes to that. All right. So I, now I want to talk about your, your style of play a little bit right now, because personally, I compare your style of play to Josh Allen. Who, I, who I, I, I would say is top five quarterback in the league just because you're a dual threat quarterback. Who would you say your your style of play is closest to right now in the NFL? I personally think I like to compare myself to Brock Purdy. I love him. A lot of people don't. I just think he's like a great quarterback and all around a, a winner. So that's who I compare myself because just like the size and stature of him and the way he plays, I think that's who I am most actually compared to physically and yeah, how he plays the game. I want to talk a little bit about the recruitment again with Rutgers. Mm -hmm. Greg Schiano there as the head coach. What was that first meeting like with him? And what was it about Coach Schiano that kind of drew you and made you want to go to Rutgers? So I was with my um, my friend Dylan Braithwaite, who's at Rutgers right now. I kind of went through his whole entire recruitment process with him the year before, the year prior. Um, I was with him when he committed. I was with him when he got offered, which was the same day. But um, – it was a cool experience and just like being at a big 10 school, it's not like nothing else. Um, Shiano is a great guy, a great coach who I've known for a while. Who I know people who know, um, he really cares about family and football and it's all about, like he says, chop. Um, I knew it was the place I wanted to go before I even had a shot of going there. So it was a no brainer when he gave me the shot. Um, but yeah, he's a tough guy, a serious dude. Um, he's just a great coach. Now, I want I want to go back again to I would say my favorite game of yours uh, in in high school, which is yeah. kind of brings things full circle. Full circle yeah. Is mm -hmm. the, the, the was the battle for bridge? Yeah, battle for the bridge. Uh, you guys played at Rutgers University, probably the biggest stage you guys yeah. have played on. Yeah. Um, pack, you know. The, People in the seats, the sidelines, everybody was going crazy. A game that went into overtime. Mm -hmm. But uh, you had a teammate in that game who also plays for, for Rutgers yeah. right now who came, who went the year the year before. So he's actually there now, Dylan yeah. Braithwaite. What's that like for you going back, knowing that one of your top wide receiver threats from high school is now going to be with you again at the collegiate level? Uh, it's great. I mean, he's my best friend out of football. So um, I've spent a lot of time with him. I spent a lot of time at Rutgers with him. I know a lot of people at Rutgers, and I'm more than excited to be with him. And with more than just him, I got my boys KJ and Ian from Long Island. So we got a lot of Long Island kids representing uh, Rutgers right now. And I'm really excited to work with them all. So it's going to be cool. That, that, like you said, that must be an amazing feeling to already have that comfort level yeah. with certain people on campus and on the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely not going in there blind, yeah. Gotta love it. So now this year, because you are you are incoming incoming freshman right now. So what's your focus going into your, your freshman year? Um, learn. That's my main focus. Just learn. I'm not going into it knowing I'm going to play because I know I'm not my freshman year. I just want to sit behind these guys who've had the experience and uh, just really learn what it's like. The whole another level. It's a lot faster, a lot more demanding on the brain at the quarterback level. So the quarterback spot. So I'm just excited to get in there and learn and get on the field as fast as possible. No, knowing that Rutgers was always your number one choice, as you mentioned, and then spending some time on campus, did you find yourself at times kind of scouting the other Big Ten teams, like seeing what they're running defensively and, and what you, you're going to be going up against? And even though, like you said, you don't expect to play this year, right. um, obviously you're not expecting to sit for long. At some point you're expected yeah. to take over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I could say I looked at their defenses, but um, that's something I'd probably get more into in college. Um, I mean, we play the best schools in the country, so it's every Saturday. Whatever game I'm watching, I know I'm probably going to play that team eventually. So, yeah, I mean, it's cool. Absolutely. 
Uh, Will Gordon in the building. What's going on, man? I see the I see the the, the people is checking in with us right now. Um, all right, so I want to ask you this, you know, because I want to go back to that this your uh, your junior year after coming off the the second championship. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys lost uh, a wide receiver uh, who was ranked the number one player in the state. How much did that change things for you guys offensively, and what you what you did going into the season? Um, it was definitely hard, you know, losing a weapon like that. Um, I wouldn't say it changed much in the long run, just because um, we never based it off one person. Anytime we won a game, um, like I said, it was more overall just losing Coach Roy and um, having to regain a form of leadership, which was pretty hard. But, yeah, it, it was hard losing Josiah Brown, and, you know, I wish the best of luck for him, too, at Penn State. But um, You guys may play each other at, at some yeah, point. At some point. At some point. But, yeah, it was tough. It wasn't something that we expected, you know, after the season. But he wanted to go back to his hometown, which is respectable. So it is what it is. Guys, yeah, the, 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 show, the show must uh, must go on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a tough part of the game, but you're going to cross paths with a lot of these guys at the next level, of course. Yeah, I mean, more than I would ever think, yeah. Got you. Um, well, we, we, we're we talking to the newest addition to Rutgers University uh, quarterback uh, right now. He's going to be the newest quarterback for Rutgers University. Uh, he, he got a little weight because he's going to be a freshman, so he probably mm-hmm. going to see him more, you know, probably like sophomore year. But I'm going to call Coach uh, Greg up, see, you know, <laughs> I'm, when I come down to the game, we'll see what's going on. And uh, see what we could we could make it happen. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So tell me this. I do want to talk because right now we got one of the biggest games in football coming up. Um, I know you just said you kind of <laughs> liking your game a little bit up with uh Brock, Brock Purdy's, right. but you do have a, a, a Rutgers alum playing on That's the other it. side of the Kansas City That's Chiefs. It. So who are you rooting for in this game? I'm rooting for the 49ers. If I'm being blatantly honest, I want them to win. I want, I love, the, I love the Chiefs, but I'm kind of sick of them winning, and I really want a, a little change up going on. But you know, Patrick Mahomes is the guy, and he's gonna be pretty hard to take down. And Pacheco's had an unbelievable season, like always. He's a stud. It's gonna be a tough game. I think it's gonna be a great game. I've been hearing a lot of talk about a blowout on the 49ers, which I just totally disagree with. But um, I think it's gonna be a, a game, a really good game. The, the Chiefs trying to do what y'all did, went when back to back. No yeah. Fan. I'm not opposed to anything happening. I'm not a fan of either team. So, but, you know, we got that Rutgers on Rutgers blood on the Chiefs side. So I'm always rooting for him. But I got you. Shout out shout out to my guy, Lenny Parisi, in, in the comments right there. He he wants to know who, who brought you to your first Rutgers game. That would be Lenny Parisi. <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> they, um, they know Lenny on Twitter too. Twitter, like his, his his name rang bells in the Twitter yeah. first. He had a little beef with with some of the fans at an, an opposing school that uh that that Holy Trinity beat. Um, I, I think it was in their homecoming game too. Uh, yeah, it was Kellenberg. That was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a little Twitter beef going on, right? <laughs> Rocco, as, as we talked about, you guys winning back to back championships. Uh-huh. How tough is it to stay focused during that second run? Something that Kansas City's trying to do themselves. Um, just don't let anything get to your head. Um, it wasn't that hard to stay focused. Uh, we moved up a division, so it wasn't like we just had a chip on our shoulder to keep winning. It wasn't like anybody was expecting us to win again. Um, so it was kind of like that kind of thing. We was trying. We were trying to get the three P, man. That's what we wanted. We wanted the three P. I wanted it crazy. I wanted it bad. Yeah, but it is what it is. It's Over. Okay. That. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, we'll get one. We'll get one from Rutgers. When uh when, when you take over, yeah, you get to the college football playoff. That's the goal. And then that'll be that'll be youth, high school, and college. You got a championship, and I think yeah. that's a good resume going getting you know getting ready to go to the next level. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You know, if we you know obviously the playoffs in college have switched this year, so everybody's got a shot now. It's not going to be all political with the change in I think it's what twelve teams, right? Yeah. Hey, um, Trevor, say bring up uh, Will's question. This is a good question we got in the, in the comment section there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Eric. He, uh, he wants to know, young man, when did you start playing quarterback and when did you realize you could make it at a D1 level? 
Um, I started fully playing quarterback in seventh grade. So I was only playing running back before when you met me on the Cardinals. I was I don't even know what I was. Um, <laughs> I, I knew I wanted to play quarterback, and um, I worked with my quarterback coach, uh, James Brady, who I've worked with for the last uh, however long I've been playing quarterback. Um, I knew I could make it probably – my freshman, not knew that I could make it, but I knew I had to make it. Like I wasn't, I was in the mentality where I only wanted to play Division One football. Not saying I wouldn't have played it if it didn't go my way, but um, that's what I wanted to do. So I just worked my ass off, and it um, with people around me that were going to Division One schools, it became a reality in high school. So, yeah. Shout out to to, to Will Gordon, and and by the way, Will is a a Terrapin fan. So he, he he will be paying attention to your career, right? Uh, he, he he knows you guys are gonna cross paths at some point. For sure, for sure. Like we we definitely, I told you, we definitely uh mobbing out as soon as soon as Rocco get ready to take over, we mobbing out uh to Rutgers yeah. and um and, and going to a couple of games. Actually, you know what? Lenny Parisi actually took me to my first Rutgers game too. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Shout so he's out got season tickets. Yeah, 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 he does. Yes, he does. He does. I, I won a couple of times. Will wants to know, uh, did you play any other sports? Yeah, I played baseball my whole entire life, which I was arguably better at baseball than I was at football. I ended up falling out of love for baseball freshman year of high school and just focused on football after that. But, yeah, I was a big baseball guy. Played lacrosse. Played all sports growing up, but um, I was big with baseball. But it didn't – I just didn't love it. Like, well, once I started getting good at football, the, the feelings just weren't the same towards – being on standing on a baseball field all day compared to just all the pressure of being a quarterback. It just wasn't the same feeling. And did you ever think because you know that base baseball money is, is very mm -hmm. good. And then when you got to take into effect that the physical punishment that you yeah. take going on from, from football, did that yeah. ever, you know, weigh in on your mind? Nah, I never really thought of it like that, but I just didn't love it the same. Like there was just no feeling like playing football and being on the football field and just me versus everybody. I just didn't love baseball like that. It was too boring for me. I just like the excitement of football. But yeah, I love baseball and always have a spot in my heart. But I did play baseball my whole life before I played football. But yeah, no, that's about it. Do you feel, I mean, we hear a lot with Mahomes and how he played baseball and how it helps him with throwing off off balance and different arm angles. Do you feel the same way as a quarterback that baseball is helping? A hundred percent. And I don't think I would be the same if I didn't play baseball growing up my whole life. But yeah, it, it really does help. And Will, Will, Gordon, Will Gordon wants to know uh, what position did you play? He's he's guessing at the shortstop or outfield. I did play shortstop. Yeah, I played shortstop and I pitched. Okay. Now, and you went you wouldn't get back into it though, because because I know Rutgers, you know they got they got the baseball <laughs> team there too. Uh, they're, too good, they're too good at baseball for me to start up again. I was, um, gonna play, I was gonna maybe play this year, but I didn't even think about it now. But yeah, no, absolutely not. Um, it would be cool, but those guys, that's a, they're a solid. I mean, they're probably, they might be better at football than they are, at baseball than they are at football, uh, ranking wise. So, yeah, it's not something I'd be able to just jump into again after five years. But that's a, long time. that's a long time away from the game to just start playing again, uh, especially at that level. Big shout out to everybody that's on the live. I see more and more people is uh checking in. Um again, we 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 are here with uh with the, with the two time two time champion Rutgers News QB. Um Rocco's been rocking out with us. Um I do I I want to I want to talk a, a little bit more NFL um while we got you on on the program. I want to talk about this AFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. Um Rocco from from the quarterback standpoint and being on that field where do you think Baltimore went wrong um, against the Chiefs? Running the football? <laughs> it's that simple. Um, I don't know. Lamar looked a little shaken up, which I haven't really seen all season. Um, they had ran the ball, I think, what, 20 for one time, something like that in the first half, six times in the second half. It just didn't seem right. Um, Chiefs have a better run defense than pass defense. So, I mean, the Chiefs have a horrible run defense and a really good pass defense. So, I'm surprised they didn't attack that more. But um, from a quarterback standpoint, I don't think Lamar did anything wrong. He just looked a little rattled at the end, but he made big plays. Um, you know, that Zay Flowers, that whole thing at the end, that was tough. That's tough to come back from. Yeah. 
But it was a good game. I wanted the Ravens to win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, I really you mentioned Lamar. You met, I Tripp wanted Lamar as well. That's he's he's still heartbroken. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you mentioned a great point because it was one of the things that Tripp and I we were texting during the game. The Ravens never never committed to the run game. Um, as you mentioned, even though they had twenty one rushing attempts, eight of those are Lamar scrambling. Yeah. So those weren't even really drawn up run plays. Those were him improvising. Uh, they kind of went away, I thought, from what their game plan should have been, which has been to run the ball, set up more play action, and then kind of get the Chiefs off balance. They allowed the Chiefs to sit, I think, in a lot of cover two the whole game. Yeah, it was it was definitely something weird that I did not think that was going to happen. I mean, most teams do attack the Chiefs on the ground. So yeah. I don't know if it was the offensive coordinator, but it was weird for sure. Uh, it was over there. Todd Munkin, I believe, is their old, old coordinator. Yeah. I think yeah. so. He, he was getting uh, a lot of hate after that game, for sure. Well, yeah. you're, you're a Brock Purdy fan, as you mentioned, and yeah. you hear a lot of the criticism. There, there's people who praise him. There are a lot of people who criticize him. A lot of people uh, criticize him. They call him a system quarterback. Yeah, I've heard it all. I wouldn't say I'm a fan, but I do like the way he plays, and I don't I don't think the system quarterback should be named to anybody that plays in the NFL because I think that's a horrible name mm -hmm. to say to an NFL quarterback. He's won so many games, and, I mean – you see what he did against – he came back in the second half and just absolutely yes. killed it. And uh, that's not something just a guy who just could throw routes um, and with no pressure could do. So he could take pressure. He could do all the things. Um, I wouldn't say he's at a level like Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I like Lamar the best just because he's just so good at everything he does. But, um, yeah, he's a pretty good quarterback. So I think he deserves a lot more love than hate right now. And let's see what he could do. I mean, all we'll talk um, – in two weeks, so we'll see what can happen. What he's gonna do? Yeah, I, I think I think the moment may have been too big for them because it was a lot of bad penalties. They they were racking up back to back. Yeah. Zay Flowers fumble, you know, in the in the end zone I mean, on the goal line. So, but you know, it, they definitely should have ran the football a lot a lot more, especially you know with Lamar coming off of a hundred yards rushing and two touchdowns the week before it was like, you know, what happened? Why'd y'all change the game plan and try to force the pass uh, so right. much, you know, um, in regard to, to Brock Purdy. Yeah, man, he's, he's, he's done nothing but win. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Much as we talk about him, he's done, he's done nothing but win. Obviously, I mean, no, nobody's just going undefeated like that. Everybody's taking a couple losses, but for the most part, since he's been there, they've been winning. And um, you know, he's a young kid. He's young, man. He's really yeah. young. Like he's got so much time to do so much stuff. So. Exactly. Let me go to Will. Will got another question like, for you up here. Yeah. Will says, "Was Rutgers the best opportunity for you to play, or did you have a connection with the program and with the portal? How does that make you look at the landscape of the game?" Um, I wouldn't say Rutgers is was the best place for me to play at, like the highest level of football I could have played at. So it was definitely the best opportunity I had to play at a high level that I think I could play at. Um, what do you say? Uh, what is it? The uh, Yeah, the transfer portal, I mean, now being in college, it's not really something that I want to even think about because if I keep that in my head, then it's just going to bother me. If they're going to bring people in, they're going to bring people in, but I was there first, so it is what it is. Um, the transfer portal is a weird place. It's good for people. It's bad for people, but it's meant for the player, so – it is what it is. Got you. Shout out to uh Gary Blankenship. He said he's showing some some records. Love go Scarlet Knights. We got we got records fans are checking in. We got some records fans in the building. Y'all gonna be seeing a lot of Rocco uh very very soon. I, I'm I'm really excited uh, about that man. I'm I'm so looking forward to it. Um, again, Rocco, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get ready to to to, to wrap up in a in a little while. But I want to congratulate you again on everything that you've been able to accomplish from youth football being a champion there, uh, from high school football being a champion there, and then making this next step. There's a lot of guys that would love to be in your position right now and to be able to say not only are they playing college football, but they're playing D1 college football at a, a very well-known uh, school in Rutgers University with a very um, – very good uh coach in in Shiano. and um so that, that that's that's the big thing I'm, I'm so i'm so proud of you guys and what you've done thank you it means a lot i'm yeah, more than happy to be where i'm at so i can't wait yeah i see i see uh yeah we'll say he's ruined for you 
Um, <laughs> Except when you play against the Terps. <laughs> uh, they got the best of us the last two years, but uh, we'll see if uh, what happened. two is gone. Yes. A little two is gone. So yeah, that's gonna change as soon as soon as you know Rocco gets to the school. All that's changing. All we needed was that little uh, little tongue by lower guy to get out of there. <laughs> he's the problem. He was a, he's a serious cornerback. I wonder what he's going to do. He's got another year. He's trying to push for a six-year eligibility, so that's going to be interesting. I seen somebody to that that just popped up that did that is going to be playing for Rutgers. I saw that too. Yeah. I, that. I, I don't actually know who that is. Um, I know he's been to a lot of schools. I think he came to Rutgers last year. So, yeah, yeah I think he pushed for a six-year eligibility this year. But, you know, that's another thing too. I mean, eligibility has become the weirdest thing in the whole entire world. Um, yeah. Good and bad, but. You know, you I mean, some people, it. yeah, some people are abusing it. We're seeing some of them that are getting a little out of hand. Do you, I know going into this freshman year, as you already mentioned, you, you aren't expecting to play this year. Have you already decided to redshirt or were you well, going to kind of wait to get They decided for you, but okay. yeah, I'd redshirt for sure. Okay. I mean, I don't see myself being in the game, so it, it would be a no brainer to redshirt, have five years of eligibility. So, yeah. Copy, copy. Hold on, we got a couple more questions coming in for you, Rocco. Shout out to my guy drunk in the building. Come on, drunk, yeah. wait. Don't be drunk today. We got, you know what I'm saying? We got minors on, on the program. Right? You can't be getting drunk. All right, but uh, ask, ask Rocco. Rutgers got some big-time basketball recruits coming. Are you planning on hitting up any of those games? Yeah, I mean, we got what? I think the best, was he the number two recruit in the country? We got they got, we got him. We got a bunch of guys. Um, yeah, I've already been to a bunch of basketball games. I've been to like two or three when I was on campus. It's like an insane atmosphere. The games get absolutely, they get more packed in the football games. <laughs> Um, you know, it's a great stadium or arena, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be on as many games as possible. Well, he's 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 not joining the Will, trips. Get, just Will, get yeah, Will's already trying to recruit you to join the transfer portal <laughs> <laughs> and head a little further down 95. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, go go on my go on my Instagram or my Facebook, and um, I want you to check out uh Rocco's footage. I got he's like this footage is clips are spread out through my through my um social media. You'll see a lot of his uh his plays. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna throw up I'm gonna, I'm gonna post um this week. I'm gonna post some of Rocco's highlights um to the to the channel um so that you guys can see some of his, his high school uh highlights because when you want to talk about big plays, he he has a lot of a lot of big plays, whether it be running the football in for touchdowns at, you know, in, in the biggest stage in Rutgers or throwing 40 yard bombs down the field for touchdowns. He got some really big plays. So I'm going to actually post those highlights up on, on all our social media this week. All right. Yeah. You like that Rutgers game. That was a pretty cool game. That was one I'll never forget. I don't even care about whatever happens in college, but that's a game I'll never forget for the rest of my life. At least now you know you're used to playing in that stadium. You got, right. you got the feel of it. I had the best and worst game of my life in that stadium, so I did fumble a couple of times, but I don't think I ever played like that before. Um, and y'all got, got an overtime win. That's that's in yeah, the set. I had like almost 400 yards, I think, um, in the air. Um, it was like the longest game I feel like I've ever been a part of in my life. I feel like that game went on for like two days. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. But yeah, that overtime one was crazy, but I knew we were gonna win that game. I wasn't gonna lose. So, Rocco, before you before you get up out of here, um, let let everybody at, at home know where they can uh, follow you at on social media. Yeah, you can follow me at Instagram. Like the biggest thing, I don't I'm not really active on anything else, but uh, Rocco Renoni one on Instagram. That's about it. Uh, you follow me on Twitter too. Same thing. But all right, make sure y'all 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 stay in touch with Rocco. Don't say we did not tell y'all about this young man now, because when you start seeing his highlights on ESPN from his uh, once he once he makes his Rutgers debut, y'all gonna be like, yeah, they did tell us on Real Fans <laughs> what was going on. We should have known better. That's funny, guys. Well, he is not. Come on, I. Right, you know what, <laughs> Rocco? Listen, we we appreciate you for for rocking out with us. Oh, um, again, congratulations on, on 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 being at Rutgers. We definitely gonna gonna get up there to support you. You know, as soon as you, you take over that starting role. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me. No doubt, Rocco. Best of luck. Thank you. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is Real Fans. Real Talk. Real fans, real talk.
we is real as you thought. Real 